In this video, we will again be looking at the software for running the autonomous vehicle. Specifically, we will look at the modules needed for grabbing and saving the camera image data and saving the steering and speed control data. When combined together with the previous keyboard control modules, the vehicle will be ready to start collecting suitable training data for training the machine learning algorithms. This is the fifth video in the overall project. The project is to build a deep learning Raspberry Pi controlled autonomous vehicle. The project will cover the system from end to end, from building the hardware, the base RC chassis, and attaching the Raspberry Pi and the associated electronics, and then getting it all working. It then works through the planning and development of the software that controls it all, as well as the training and the testing of various machine learning algorithms to see how well they go at line following. Previously, we identified all of the main logical components that are needed to make up the vehicle software, and we dove into the details for the bits that allow us to control and drive the vehicle. This time, we will be looking at the modules that support the capturing of images from the camera and then saving the relevant ones, as well as what's needed for saving the speed and steering control data. After adding these modules, we will be ready to drive the vehicle and capture the data needed for training our machine learning. But before jumping into the details, it's worth mentioning here that Raspbian is a Linux-based operating system. It is not a real-time operating system. So with our software, there are no guarantees on timing for the code in the different processes or threads. The operating system will make the decisions on when and exactly where to run the various software instructions. So we have to be aware of these limitations and account for this as best we can when we build our software. Our approach here is to try and make the different flows of execution in the software as independent as possible and ensure that if one of them takes significantly longer than normal to execute, it doesn't cause things to fail. So, Firstly, let's look into saving the speed and steering control data. Our current motor steering control thread is running in a continuous loop, with a period consistently around 0.05 seconds. This loop is already calculating the next values for the speed and steering commands and sending them off to the steering servo and speed controller. So all we need to do here is to continuously append them to a file and we should be okay. However, we need to be a little careful as saving data to disk can sometimes be slow. We cannot afford to block this control thread. So it's best to do the actual saving to file in a separate thread, which grabs the data from say a queue and have the control loop simply throw the speed steering data with timestamp into the to be saved queue. So this gives us the speed and steering data in a single file with the timestamps. Remember there are no guarantees on timing, so on average they will be spaced around 0.05 seconds, but not exactly. Now for the camera processing. Capturing still images with the Pi is kind of slow, maybe around 0.5 seconds to capture a full image. This is way too long to wait when controlling a vehicle. We really need to be able to get up-to-date images from the camera and we need to get them continuously. Fortunately with the Pi, there are various ways of capturing and recording continuous streams of images at a relatively high frame rate. They do have a slightly reduced field of view compared to still images, but that is not a problem with the wide-angled lens camera we are using. What we do is set up the camera to run in its own process, and rapidly capture images, say at a frame rate of around 20 frames per second. Running in its own process means it is much less impacted by what else is going on with the Pi. Now we let the camera capture process happily capture images at high speed, and let any other process that needs to access an image simply request the latest image when it needs it. The image save process works this way. We run this as a separate process too, as writing image data to disk is slow. When image save is ready to store an image, it signals to the camera capture process it would like to access the next image. So on the next frame, 
it provides a copy to the save process, which starts writing it to disk. This takes a while, so the camera capture process continues independently on its merry way capturing images. When the save process has finished compressing and saving the image, it can then go back and request another image from the camera process, and the overall cycle repeats. The result is that we get a set of saved individual image files. From testing we found the images were reasonably evenly spaced, but occasionally you would find larger gaps of several seconds. Gaps with images are not a problem for collecting training data. Each image with the associated speed and steering data are an independent training example. Just a note on the implementation side of things. I use multi-processing shared memory to communicate the image data between the two processes. When the image save process is ready to save an image, it sets a flag for the camera capture process. On the next captured image, the capture process then writes the latest image to shared memory and resets the flag. The image save process then starts reading in the image and saving to disk. This can take a while, but when it's done, it again sets a flag and the cycle continues. So altogether, we'll have the speed and steering data, time stamped, saved in a single file. We'll have captured images with time stamps stored in separate files. With this, we have enough information to generate the necessary training data for our machine learning autonomous driver. So now let's jump into the pseudocode. As I mentioned, I will use a separate thread for saving the control data. It takes as input a control queue and a run flag. The code simply opens a single file for saving the data, and then loops until the run flag tells it to stop. It reads any speed or steering data from the control queue, and if there was data, just appends it to the end of the file. Now for the image data. I run the camera capture as a separate process. The key inputs are the shared memory and the flag for controlling access to the shared memory. I use the Pi camera module for capturing the images and follow the custom output object recipe from the Pi camera documentation. The custom output object processes every captured frame from the camera. The process then starts recording using the custom output object and basically continues until the run flag tells it to stop. Now there are two helper classes used. One is basically the shared memory for the image, which is simply an array matching the image size, as well as storage for the image timestamp. The second helper class is the custom image processor. It takes the shared memory and flag as input parameters, and implements the write method called for every captured image. The write method just checks the flag, and if some other process is ready for an image, it writes it into the shared memory and updates the flag. Now the save image process is basically the consumer of images from the camera. It gets these images from the shared memory as indicated by the shared memory flag. Once the process starts, it sets the flag to indicate that it's ready to receive a new image and then loops until the run flag tells it to stop. It waits, blocking, until the shared memory flag tells it there is valid image data. Then it reads and saves the image data, and then sets the flag again. There are no changes to the keyboard or display threads. There is one change to the motor steering control thread. It now has a control queue parameter, where it sends the latest speed steering data to be saved. In the main loop, after updating the speed and steering data, it queues, non-blocking, on the control queue, the timestamp and data. The only other changes are in the master vehicle process, which now instantiates the control queue. It creates the thread for saving the speed and steering data, creates the shared memory and the shared memory access flag, and creates the save image process and the camera capture process. So now let's have a quick check on how the code performs. Here, I am actually starting to collect one of the first sets of training data. The left image shows the vehicle being driven around the track. 
I am following closely behind with the keyboard in hand. The wireless keyboard is connected directly to the Raspberry Pi. On the bottom right of the screen, you can see the output from the code. The first few lines show the most recent keyboard input. Below this, it shows the current motor speed and steering PWM values. It also shows the loop timing for the main control thread. It displays the minimum, the average, and the maximum loop periods, updated as we go. It then shows how many frames have been captured by the camera, and finally, how many images have been saved to disk. So let's keep driving for a little bit more. And finally, we'll bring the vehicle to a stop and quit. After quitting, it writes out a little more statistical data on how things performed. Overall, the control thread had an average period very close to 0.05 seconds. The maximum period of one of the control thread loops was 0.07 seconds. The camera achieved a frame rate of effectively 20 frames per second. So it looks like its process was not really impacted by all the other code. And writing the images to shared memory didn't appear to slow it down. There were around 740 images saved. The minimum period between image saves was 0.138 seconds. And on average, they were spaced around 0.23 seconds apart. As expected, for some images, there was a large gap between saved images, up to 4.3 seconds. Now finally, let's have a look at some of the captured data. Taking a vehicle's eye view of things, and overlaying the upcoming steering commands, My driving may not be the best, but overall, things appear to be working as promised. The vehicle can be driven, and we can collect the image, speed, and steering data needed to train the machine learning models. In the next video, I will cover the final main piece of software for running the machine learning model inference process to do the actual autonomous driving. If you want to follow the overall project, please hit the subscribe button and feel free to like or comment.